actually jumping jacks is what we normally jumping do. Jumping jacks, yeah. okay, I'll do that. Okay. So this yeah. is the who, whom, and why. Who, yes, who, who, whom, and why panel. I am the moderator, so ah. basically all I have to do is ask the questions and force you guys to answer them. Okay. Because I, I, I have devised a series of very interesting, hard, and tough questions to answer for you guys to debate about. There's no math, is there? Serious, the hard, and tough? You know well, me so well. Yes. Then. I think you know as well as anyone else. If the question starts with Captain Jack, the answer is yes. <laughs> That's why there will be no Captain Jack questions on this panel. Okay. But we're going to start, Aww. as I like to do, is with introductions. So everybody knows who is on this panel. And we'll start at the very, very end with the steampunk looking man. Wow. Hi, I'm the wonderful Billy Flynn from GeekRadioDaily.com. Ding. Thank you. There's always someone there who knows. Podcaster, the sometimes weekly award non winning podcast, huge Doctor Who fan, have been. God, since like the fifth grade, way back in the crazy 80s when you could only see it on PBS on your UHF station from 6 to 7. And sometimes on Saturdays. And um, I'm Dieter Warhouse, um, writer. I'm also a musician. I go by uh, numerous uh, names, um, Protein 5 and Consortium 499. And if you're familiar with my music, you'll know that um, I am a huge Doctor Who fan. And it's a running theme with my music. So I guess that's why I'm here, because it's my favorite show, and... I would love to interview, interview you sometime for our, our Doctor Who podcast, okay. Gallery Fair Pirate Radio. All right, no problem. Yes, yeah, that's awesome. I've never heard of that before, ever. Really? Gallery Pirate what? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> who? Oh, I see what I did there. Yeah, I did. Ah. Clever, witty. I am, I'm a cheeky monkey. Um, my name is Jason Buterin. I'm creative director of a cinematic little band of filmmaking gypsies called Mad Ones Films. Uh, we're currently promoting Act 3 of a short film trilogy, the trilogy being called The Gospel According to Booze, Bullets, and Hot Pink Jesus. Um, I don't remember seeing you oh. there last night, so Shane, <laughs> you were there. Mm -hmm. I was too drunk. Oh, oh. no such thing. That, no, that, that is a good excuse for anything at any time. This is true. Yeah, yeah I have to agree. Well, there was a furry involved, one or the other. Oh, <laughs> but never, never the twain should meet. However, so, always the twain should meet. True. Well, it depends on what furry, though. Yeah. Um, but giant, giant, lifelong, you know, who nerd, um, similar to the, 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 the steampunk gentleman at the end of the table, you know, watching it on Saturday nights on PBS from like 9 to 10, right before WKRP, and oh, then like yeah. the Twilight Zone, and then Three Stooges. Um, but I mean, just grew up with Baker the entire time, and then once the, the new Who started, it just sort of rekindled uh, the love that I have in both hearts for just genius, genius ship. And what, what is your son's name? My, son, my son's name is Stormageddon and the Dark Lord of All. <laughs> <laughs> Which shows what a big Doctor Who fan he is. Yes. <laughs> with my wife, yeah, my wife, while she was still afraid of, we watched that episode, and I was just like, as soon as he called him Stormy, I'm like, oh, God. Stormageddon! And it just sort of rolls off the tongue. So it's Stormageddon and the Dark Lord of All, Buterian. Um, so your right. son is going to hate Doctor Who. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Probably. Uh, if anyone knows, if anyone sees a little Tardis papoose, please let me know because I want one of those desperately. I need to talk to Angela and have her try and make me one. Uh, she probably I'll could. Keep my eye open. Okay. Clayton. Good. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm Clayton Wick. I am the co-host of Gallifrey Pirate Radio, a podcast watched by literally several people each episode. Uh, I'm also a stand-up comedian who isn't very good at stand-up comedy yet, and uh, I'm also the assistant convention manager for StellarCon in High Point, North Carolina next weekend. You guys should <coughs> know, even though the notice is too short. Act 3 will be screening at StellarCon next yes, weekend, too. And I am uh, David Beauchamp. I am the moderator of this panel, which is going to be actually nice where I just have to ask the questions and not give any answers. Ooh, so oh, are you saying moderator thing. or mind raper? Both. Okay. Um, Word. And I, I am I'm an author. My Shields. Hey, I'm, I'm finishing my introduction here. Um, I'm, I'm an author. I'm a podcaster, uh, anthologist, editor, librarian, all that sorts of things. And we are going to jump right on in. We're going to get the big question out of the way first before I really start to amp things up here. Okay. What's he going to do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who is your. Okay, we're going to get the doctor question out of the way. Who is your favorite <laughs> doctor and why? I said PBS 80s discovering it, so of course it's Tom Baker. Every doctor I see is judged against Tom Baker. That's why I love Matt Smith so much, because he's a mesh-up of two doctors who remind me of Baker. He is, he is the one. I was traumatized when he left. I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to happen. And he turned into Peter Davison, and I didn't understand why. There was no internet. There were no answers. 
Can we have some tissues down this end? <gasps> oh, I can't talk about him soup. Him That's all you need. <laughs> some boy needs a hug. God, can't some woman please come comfort me? Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Smart move, ladies. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> He's well, of of so course, well. I think the obvious answer here is uh, Patrick Troughton. Um, That's a good answer. He's probably been the inspiration for a lot, uh, probably the biggest inspiration for most of the later doctors. We know that um, that uh, Tennant doctor was basically Davison, and Davison's doctor was Troughton. So there we have two generations of doctors right there. And we, knew, we already know that um, the 11th doctor, um, Matt Smith, He's modeling his basic doctor after um, the whole Patrick Troughton vibe. And it's not the fact that, it's not the fact, here's, here's my definitive proof as to why Patrick Troughton's the best. He's the only reason to watch the two doctors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all you need to do, all you, the only part of it you need to watch is the first five, first five minutes, and that's it. You can move on. It's that simple. I would have been so much happier if I'd known that instead of someone making me watch the rest. <laughs> yeah, wait, but did, didn't we decide that Time Crash was now the official new two doctors? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Yes, but before that he had pain for so long. <sighs> he did. It was it was wonderful. He was traumatized. It's okay. He, I need my pain. <laughs> Thank you, Bones. It loves his comedy. Um it kinda does. I, I kinda I'm kinda split. I mean classical canonical who it, it, it has to be Baker. Like so, I mean that, that's what I saw. I grew up with um the, the jelly babies and the seventy five foot long scarf. Um I mean it, it just he, he sold it for me. But I don't, did you know that Jelly Babies actually started with Patrick Trout? Yes. That's true, very true, very true. Um and again lending to your definitive uh point there about Trout being the best. Um but but new who it's a uh, Matt Smith won me over with that first episode, and I just mm -hmm. I keep falling more and more in love with the boy. Um, not only are bow ties cool, and I mean that in a, in a purely heterosexual geek kind of way. Um, no, I mean, I'd, I'd probably make out with him, but uh, well, no, I'd make out with Stephen Moffat first. But I mean, Matt Matt Smith. I mean, he like I said in the other panel yesterday. I mean, he he embodies this this duplicitous nature for me. That he can be very sweet and childlike and innocent, and look at, look at any single world that he's on with amazement and wonder, and, and he can switch in a heartbeat or in two heartbeats. Um, uh -huh. And and not not kill you, but give you like the worst demise ever, like with the scarecrows, um, brother mine, sister mine. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, and well, actually, that was Tenet. Um, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> there goes my entire argument. But I mean, yeah. And, and Matt Matt Smith with the beard, but the bow ties, the Stetsons, everything else. I mean, it's just the boy has sold it for me, and I I, I heart heart him dearly. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. Ditto. No, no. What Matt, do you say? Uh, Matt Smith is a really great doctor. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Tennant. Uh, Smith was my first doctor. Uh, I actually came in on him, but. Ew. But. Uh, Hope you would see this. Out of the, out of the classic doctors, uh, Troughton is my favorite, and. Actually wasn't also leaving for good I actually wasn't sure why until I was uh, was reading a blog where someone had put it really well, I think. He said that uh, the best thing about Troughton is that the only time he ever got angry were when you, as an audience member, perfectly understood why he was angry. It was either because someone had done something completely horrible that he was witness to, or because someone he cared about placed himself in danger by going against his clearly specified instructions. Yeah. A lot of the other doctors have a habit of coming across as unreasonable, but the thing about Troughton's doctor is that if you do what he tells you to do, you're going to get out of it alive, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Tennant can't really make that claim. <laughs> Okay, uh, just curiosity, out in the audience, we're going to let you participate a little. Who is your favorite doctor and why? If anybody wants to answer the question. Unless you want to be silent and not say anything. Moving on. Yes, Rich. We'll, we'll gladly make your opinions for you. Yeah. Come on, they Rich. They all love Patrick Trout. I, I'm right. choosing you. Obviously. Henry you Mendelstein, go. he's my orthodontist. Um, <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, it was Tenet at first, but with... Each and every episode, it's just more and more and more Smith. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Tennant suffered from some really bad filler writing from time to time. Yeah. And somebody who was trying to get so much emo angst that it was almost as if he bought his TARDIS at Hot Topic. <laughs> um, 
but just making it well. You can't do that now. <laughs> NFYE. Um, I'm, I'm surprised Ooh. that he didn't have like little uh, Gur and, and you know, Invader Zim <laughs> tattooed uh, on, on his clothing somewhere. Uh, but, but honestly, Smith, uh, just like Jason said, he plays this childlike uh, amazement and then also that childlike darkness that can just turn on a heartbeat, justified every time, but it's fucking scary. <laughs> Creeptastical. Yes. Okay, so we're going to move on to some questions people probably don't normally ask on these sort of panels. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite, favorite TARDIS interior and why? Because we've had quite a few different um, interiors of the TARDIS over the, over almost the past 50 years. No, it doesn't. Just because you, you have to think hard on this one. Oh, my brain, no, we're good. Okay, I, I know this is going to be a minority opinion, but my favorite TARDIS interior is actually <coughs> one from the Fox TV movie. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, the Sylvester McCoy TARDIS at the beginning of that is yeah, beautiful. It, it, just, it does a really great job of conveying the size of the TARDIS in a way that every other TARDIS... Impressive as it might be, it looks like a set. That looks like an infinite expanse where anything can be. That is lived in. It, exactly. it did that duality. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it still looks like a guy's living room. And I, I, I normally won't jump in here because I'm asking most of the questions. I really wish Smith had that TARDIS right now, that interior. I think it would fit him so much better than what he has right now. Even I, that, I think it's an awesome one, but I really don't think it fits his personality. I actually think the one that he has now... Just works with his I just, kind of, kind of his kind of personality. I mean, I like the the glass floors. Oh yeah, um, exactly. But I just I don't like the console as much as as I would really like. I just didn't notice it. <laughs> but the, 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 the movie one was like so bright, though. It's like I don't see Matt. It it seemed I don't very see him in that kind. It seemed of... very Victorian. Very. I, I I just think it would fit his personality really really well. That's just my opinion. I just want to throw my two cents in there. So, Jason? Uh, I kind of want to see a Clayton's answer now that I think about it, because I, mean, I think he has a really good point. Um, well, I, I think I, it really influenced what we have nowadays. Yeah. I, I mean, because it was the first one that really showed the expanse. I mean, even though, like, your your first and second doctors had a, a pretty ex big area, with, you know, with the chairs, the clocks, and stuff like that, but and then it kind of got smaller after that, but it was the, the Fox TV movie that just really showed... It really is bigger on the inside. I mean, I it really could be massive. That. It, yeah, I was going to say that's about. <laughs> that was really, yeah, the only decent. Him and McGann. That. that was basically all it was. Are we going to go to this again? <laughs> yes. Eric Roberts is one of the best Doctor Who villains ever. Wait, wait, we haven't gotten that far yet. No, no, no we're, no. we're still on Tardises. Tardi. 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 Tardises. Yes. So interior. I I absolutely love season fourteen. I mean, I think that that one, the all wood, yeah. goth style, it, I mean, yeah. it's a good compliment to what we're talking about with the uh, the movie version, but the thing that I loved about it is that you don't have to go big to be majestic. You don't have to go yeah. big to be impressive. And the thing that I loved about it was its simplicity. And plus, it was so damn cool. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted, a, I wanted my bedroom to look like that. <laughs> I do love Smith's TARDIS. I have to do say, the first thing I thought of was the, the Fox movie. So since you took that, I'm going to go with, if it, if we look at the TARDIS I would enjoy being in the most, I would say Idris. <laughs> Good answer. Thank you. Was that an nice. option? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a TARDIS. Too late to change it. No, you can change it. I, I'll, allow, I'll allow Baxi's. It's a symbol in a <laughs> Sorry, I don't really have one with me. That means with my app. <laughs> okay, since we're still on the topic of the TARDIS. <laughs> sure, yeah, okay. Yes. And now, of course, it's, this question is totally ruined because I already know what the answer is going to be. Which TARDIS... Holy hell. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you. Oh, right my stars and garters. Yes. Which, I want a picture with you later. Yes. Which TARDIS... Which is totally because we have the Masters TARDIS, sure. we have the Ronnies, we have the Type Forty, we have you know all these various TARDISes. Which one? Of course, I don't know what the answer is going to be now. Is your favorite of the TARDISes and why? <laughs> exactly. Sexy. Sexy TARDIS. Yes. 
I mean, is is there any other answer at this point? No. Next uh, question. I was just mm -hmm. gonna answer straight up that I thought the Type 40 was just the iconic one for a good reason. It's just, I mean, that is what you think of when you think of Doctor Who, even if you're not a fan of the series. It's just, that is, in the pop culture perception, everything that the Doctor is. He is the guy who travels around in the big blue box. Well, I think a more specific uh, question that should have been asked is, which TARDIS exterior? And I know we'd probably go back to the injury. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but aside from that one, which of the blue boxes exteriors? Bad yeah, um, I like the which bad one? Wolf. What? Bad Wolf. Yeah, you spray painted on there, yes. Yeah, it actually was. I like kind of cool. Yeah, I kind of like the old ones. I like I, I like to see how the uh, the blue box aged. Yeah, episode yes. by episode, and eventually the uh, the the the, um, the badge fell off, yeah. and then the paint was starting to chip, and then it was like it's just nice to see that as the adventures go along, the TARDIS ages too. <laughs> though, though I will say, because you did pose this question, I I really like Smith's TARDIS. Because it's something new, it's something borrowed, you know, it's blue. I mean, it just, it feels classic. And especially when they got the medallion back. I mean, yeah. that was just a really, really nice touch. Um, we're going to we're gonna shift our focus back to Classic Who. Because okay. I'm, I'm, we're going to cover everything here. Um, and actually, for Clayton, we're gonna, we might have to throw in some, some modern Who as well. What is your favorite companion death and why? Oh. I'm sorry, I have so much an opinion on that. Adric. When Adric dies with Peter Davison at the start of Earthbound, and they're arguing, and he wants to go home, and he's like, you can't do it, and you're paying more attention to Tegan and Alyssa, and then he has that, oh my god, the Cyberman at the end misses him, but kills the, shoots the keyboard, and he can't close the airlock, and they watch him die, it's so dark, and the credits, the credits just show him, and it's just silent and solemn, and it's, sorry, sorry, I got caught up there. It's okay. I was hoping First, some, I was hoping, honestly, I was hoping somebody would say Adric. Oh. Okay, good. Because yeah. well, we don't want Davey to talk, it's, so I took his answer. Yes. It's very difficult because you're limited with your options. You I mean, are. What else do you have? <laughs> Katrina. Oh, we want to write her out. So let's just, like, <clears throat> she's gone. All right. Not much drama there. No. But, I mean, the only thing left is Adric. Yep. Well, technically I'm cheating, but you could go with K9 Mark III. Because in school reunion. K9 was going yeah. to be my answer. School reunion, he sacrifices himself. Now, granted, you do get a Mark IV, but since he came back and that tied into the old series, I was so happy to see K9 at the beginning. I was very sad. You're a good dog. Yes, I am, Master. I mean, come on, dude. That, that, was, that was heart wrenching. I was in tears. I'll admit it. I was in tears. Yeah, I got, I got to go K9. That, that, made me a, that made me a little weepy boy. Clayton? Uh, I don't know if it's actually a death per se, but I did like what they did with the older companions in the Five Doctors, the way that they worked in ah, the nice. uh, interesting, yeah. uh, Troughton's uh, fake companions showing up. I thought that was very interesting. Ah, yes. Just, it's kind of... In a sense, it's just them saying, yeah, we know that you loved all that stuff, but it's not coming back. And of course, they have to crap all over that with the two doctors. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the message there, I thought, was very interesting. It's just sort of one of the doctors realizing that he can't go back, that those days are far behind him. So um, I'm going to ask the USO girl, um, <gasps> who... Because because I'm Watch almost out. sure I know who, what she's going to answer because it's going to be out of new who. who. What was what was your favorite or 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 most painful companion death? Hmm. We can't include any of Rory's deaths. What? <laughs> 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 but okay, well I'm kind of with Jason on canine. I have a soft spot for that. Little really, thing. I'm surprised by that answer. I was expecting, uh, what's her name from um, Voyage of the Damned? Well, yeah, but Kylie yes. Minogue, too. That one, but it was just such a cheesy death. <laughs> like, she was doing the locomotion in space. Yeah. The green screening, like, I love that episode, but the green screening on that episode is so awful. Uh, the important thing is that Kylie Minogue died the way she lived, driving a forklift. <laughs> 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 That's the best line of the whole panel. <laughs> yeah, we can't top that. Yeah, that's 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 that. That. Okay, Rich. Uh, if I may, I think that uh, 
honestly, when when Rose was separated, I thought that was really powerful. Uh, uh, and, and I'm being completely serious. I think most of it had to do with the music that they chose. And then when the um, when the doctor appeared to her on the beach, I know it wasn't technically a death. It was the whole, ah, oh, we're killing a companion. Nah, no, we're not. But um, I felt that with him, you know, for the first time really having some sort of a romantic relationship with uh, with the companion, I mean, aside from K-9, that it was very... Um, oh, too soon. That it was very... Um, <laughs> Go. That was part of the match. Love Tess, not speak its name. Um, that... Uh, that, that it, it was really powerful, and you know, you could tell he was about to profess his love, uh, his, his very human romantic love for somebody. And I would have killed babies <laughs> if he had done that. Well, it was, I mean, it, it, I, th I thought that it was it was uh, done very powerfully. Yes. And, uh, and you know, as, as for, you know, as death goes, it's far different than when K-9 just got it. It was just gorgeous and amazing. But with Rose, I think that with the way it was shot, it made it more powerful than it actually yeah, was. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yes, man in front. Um... I've seen, I think, I think I've seen every death that was mentioned here, except I don't think I've actually seen Katrina's death. It doesn't sound like I was missing much. But I actually think my favorite death is old Amy. Oh! Oh, oh, oh God. God! Yes! Oh. Excellent Ooh. call. Wow. Excellent call. Yes. Okay, you get to replace one of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Wow, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. I recommend Amy. Baby. Yeah. yeah it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Wow. Yeah, I get, just just think of that scene again. It's just phenomenal. Uh, that's oh man. That entire that's, episode makes you cry. Yeah. That is an episode. I think it's the first Matt Smith episode we got where the Doctor is the villain of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. And it works great. So um, we we are gonna turn this now to the classic Who. What is your favorite episode, or I won't say episode story, um, out of classic Who? Uh, I mean, I'm only giving you like what 35 years worth of uh, choices. Yeah, like, you know, key hmm. of time. Do you do the alternate personality? <laughs> I mean, I'll give you guys a, a second to think. And then I've got to remember what his name was, what it was the alternate personality, and that's what I thought they were doing with Smith when we had the whole Dream Master. Yeah. God, you what do. was? Th yes. Well, while they're thinking yes. that, just to, to fill time. Yeah. Do you feel that uh, old Amy's death was uh, a mirroring of when? Uh, when Tennant finally decided to open up the Bob Watch and, and you know bring the Doctor back, as opposed to the John Smith, because it was it was essentially sacrifice, it was suicide to bring a, a somebody else back. Yeah, but you'd see the thing is is he didn't force Rory to be the Doctor and make that decision. I mean he he's I mean it was the Doctor put it in Rory's hands. He basically was like I'm not gonna make this decision. You are. But the only reason he did that was because he knew Rory would pick the one he wanted. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he, I mean, he made Rory. I mean, into him. Yeah. For that brief moment. Dick. Yeah. Everything about that moment, I think, just makes the Doctor. It, it kind of makes Matt Smith's Doctor maybe the least likable one, aside from possibly Hartnell, but in a good way. Aww. What? <laughs> No, it's just, he straight up murdered one of his own companions. Well, <laughs> that's not true. He forced one of his companions to straight up murder one of his own companions. That's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes it better. So, so any luck yet on your favorite episode? I can't find the word. Oh God, what is it you called? Know, it was... That distinction reminds me of something a friend of mine just said a couple of, of weeks ago. He um, said... Describe the episode. He said, it's only tantamount to murder. There is a valid legal <laughs> distinction. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's the one where the doctor faces this guy who looks like he's basically... He's like his complete match. He's this evil Time Lordish sort of thing. And at the end of the episode, we realize he's him as a future incarnation which, of the doctor. Which, I mean, which doctor... I got. Was it? I, I want to say it, it was either Davison or. McCoy. Well, Davison had the one where where they had the clone. Where I think it was. Not the clone. Uh, where is the? And it's the one in the new is one. It, where, is it one of the Black Guardian episodes? It might be because it's the one like this new one with uh, Matt Smith where they had the Dream Master episode. It, I was yeah, like, it's, oh, it's, they're referencing that, but it it's wasn't a Davison him. episode. It's not it's Davis. the, You're not talking about the, ah. the that big season long arc with the Valiard, are you? The Valiard, yes I am. I'm talking the Valiard, yes I am. The Valiard, thank you. Yeah, because the dream, the dream, 
I, I totally think that that Matt Smith episode was I the think origin Hilliard story for the back. I think that's just a oh. seed they laid for long term because Moffat does that. He yes, he does. He's here and waits yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a genius. That, that so, so had to be the failure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's driving me insane. So okay. make out with his brain. Yeah. What do I think? Oh, there's just so many to choose from. I know. I know. I, um, I'm two doctors. I've got, I've got the whole cover. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck doctors. you. But the one that's really... <laughs> Let me just, okay, instead of picking a favorite, because that's so darn impossible, I mean, I just love so many of them. The Cables of Drazany, the um, Talents of Wing Chang, um, you've got yes. um, 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 the Invasion. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, you got so many good stuff there. And, and it's like, well, okay, what's the one that's really fast moving up on my like scale? And, it, yeah. it, and that one is uh, the Horror of Fangor. Nice. Yeah, that, nice. That is just skyrocketing. Because every time I see that, it's like, man... How could you not love a he dies, she dies, everybody dies story? Everyone. Except for the doctor, for a up, they're the only ones that live. Everybody else. Bam, bam, bam. Even the rootin' and the rootin' shit. Bombed! <laughs> and there was a lighthouse. And a lighthouse. Yes. How much what more can you have? <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Awesome, awesome. Awesome story. So, yeah, horror at Fang Rock. Um, it's a type of thing that in Pyramids of Mars. Pyramids of Mars is awesome. Good episode. Like, the whole I key just, of time. Yeah. Yeah. Is, I mean, it's just, it, it, I just, I, I think I love everything about that. Well, I mean, key to time, you know, Douglas Adams, I mean, was in charge exactly. of that season. <laughs> exactly. It was hoopy. Yeah. So, Clayton? I know it's kind of cheating, but I'm going to have to go back to the five doctors again. I just, I, <laughs> no, I'm classic. sorry. Yeah, I can't say right. enough yeah. good stuff about it. It's just, it manages to introduce. Okay, really, four doctors. <coughs> and then... And other time lords. Yeah, other time lords. <laughs> but it finds time for all of these characters, lets each of the doctors get a decent amount of screen time, clearly communicates well, what... most of them. Well, the ones who agreed to show up. <laughs> the ones who agreed to show up. <laughs> then, I'm not even counting Baker's presence in it uh, and showing yeah. up, honestly, but... Uh, and for two down. hours, he just kept running into the target. Yeah, for two but, hours. But then Patrick Trump stole that show. But it, yeah, 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 he does. But I think Jamie Dalton it, stole it. it just, it oh wait, no, that's late. It just does a really good job <laughs> of stole it. properly communicating what each doctor was about, what their era as doctor meant, and then it wraps it up while still telling a really good story and leaving open storytelling possibilities in the future. They even mm -hmm. recast a doctor in a way that was pretty much perfect. And not only it, of all the Except. multiple Doctor ones they ever did, that was before, of course, yeah. Annette Davison. That yeah. was the first one where they actually seemed to just be having a damn fine time being together. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. As opposed to standing there going, My TARDIS! Mine! Which I, uh, When's Matlock on? Which I'll say this. Just uncomfortable. I am looking forward to see how the Five Doctor ties into the 50th. Because I think that last line is going to tie into the 50th. This, that is is how, this is how it all began. Well, they've been doing, you know, with yeah, Smith, they've been doing it all yeah. along. They've been showing pictures of all of them. They I just have to find a way to do this. They yeah. have to. Yeah, and, and, and one more thing that, I, that I'm going to say before I'm going to see in the audience who, what their classic favorite thing is. I think Susan's going to be really big in the 50th because they're just mm -hmm. bringing family so much into this. And because he basically erased where she was and we have no idea what happened to her. I just, I think she's going to play a big part. So out there, any anybody with a favorite classic Who episode? Yes. Uh, this is one that... I don't think I've ever met anybody who agrees with me it's the best. I almost never find anybody who agrees with me that it's good. I'm getting my thumbs down right now. <laughs> the Happiness Patrol. Thumbs up down. That was a, um, that was, that um, was a McCoy, McCoy yes. Yeah. Was that, uh, was that? It was that? the one that was satirizing Thatcher England. Yeah, it was right. The was, the right. Candy, right. The candy was it the candy man? Who was the companion in that? I can't remember. Was it Ace yet, or was it still, um... I actually can't, can't remember, because the companion is barely in it. Yeah. I think it's Ace. Is it? Yeah. I think it, yeah, it was Ace. Ace. But the reason I love it is because, to me, it is the epitome of Classic Who, especially Seventh Doctor, he lands on a planet that he knows nothing about. After a few minutes, decides he doesn't like their government. <laughs> collapses it in one night without firing a shot or hurting a single person. Yeah. Yeah, that's... And there's a completely ridiculous, cheesy monster You just like the downfall of governments, that's all. They were just playing to you. <laughs> so we're going to start at this end now. Yeah. G give you the first chance at this. Um, <laughs> Um, New Who, what is your favorite episode? Because I know you've seen a lot more New Who. 
So I'm going to give you the first chance at the first shot at this. Can I go for two parters? You can go for two parters. Because okay, uh, it's a story. <coughs> Not episodes we're talking about here. Uh, really, um, I'm going to have to go with uh, the Being Human Family of Blood two parter. It's just. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. That right there. Paul I, Cornell. Uh, yeah, but it's just everything about it, I think. That is where you go, okay. This is the reason that David Tennant is really in the running for one of the best doctors ever. It's just, he really throws himself into it. And <coughs> he's playing two different characters. He's playing one of those characters as the other character for one scene. It's just, you get, it's just a certain depth of performance that I don't think you usually see from a Doctor Who episode. And it's just, everything about it is tragic because... Yeah, all of that death and violence could have been prevented if he had picked any other place to hide. But because he's the doctor, that didn't occur to him. Wow, well said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jason? Blink. Yay! <laughs> so I knew someone was going to say that. When yeah. you started there, I'm like, you're going to think of other I mean, ones. Someone's going to say blink. Hands damn down. Where's, where's um, Allegra when we need yeah. her? Which is probably, I mean, blink is what made me want to make out of Stephen Moffat's brains. I mean, I mean, Moffat, the, the, I mean it's such a brilliant idea. The Weeping idea. Angels, I mean, they're, they're my favorite uh, who villain monster of all time. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's such a brilliant concept. You know, the statue, the, it, you have to look at it, and it looks fine, it's nice and serene, it's pretty. When you turn around, it'll murder the shit out of you. But not murder the shit, but just... Just play shit. I mean, I mean, I just the the weeping hands are just terrifying. And I just as, as, soon, as soon as I watched it, like I went outside, you know, walking yeah. around downtown Greens, where I'm like, uh, angel, angel, angel. Like every statue I walk by now freaks me out. And just to let you know, for only eight thousand dollars, you can have one of those angels, awesome. a, a official BBC's licensed angel Baby, statue. Can I eight thousand dollars? Not until I get mine. <laughs> that episode works yeah. because of how the Doctor is not in it. Exactly. Doctor Light episode. Everything, and it's just such a oh wow, this is how that works. From so, it, it's such an interesting look at how Doctor Who works. Sally, Sally Sparrow is just cute as a button. It's a really great hour of television, <laughs> but in a way I almost think it doesn't make a particularly good episode of Doctor Who itself. Just just because it's, it's in large part, it's about a character having to solve all of the... It's the character who isn't the Doctor mm -hmm. solving the problems of the episode. And I think it's really <laughs> fascinating. It's just... I think that when you're judging like an all-time best episode of Doctor Who, a lot of it has to be how effectively the Doctor is used. He's used, he is used effectively there, but it's it's by not using him, and that's just a little. I mean, I get the justification for it being a favorite episode. It's just kind of weird. No, to me I, the I way actually that liked works. what um, the Doctor did in that in order to facilitate. Um, solving the issue. Oh, yeah, the that's problem. really clever. It was major. The the DVDs. Crea yes, <laughs> the, the creativity involved in order to reach the conclusion that that's was necessary awesome. was immense. Only the doctor could come up with something like that. Well, yeah, like, like, when, when the TARDIS the doctor can come there, up there's with four something weeping like that. angels, and then the TARDIS just goes away and it's like, boink, and they're all staring at each other. I mean, like, I that to me was just like, that was the brilliance of the yeah. stories that, yes, he was only peripherally involved, but only someone that brilliant could solve that problem. It's, I think for me, a lot of it is just that I'm always judging episodes of Doctor Who by how good they are at bringing people into the series. <laughs> and Blink, I think, is an episode that really only works if you're already familiar with the core concept of the show. Fair. I'll give you that. That's fair. Yeah, okay. the first episode. Yeah. Okay, I, I am. I think we've intrigued you though to come into the show. Though you're like, what? The, I want to see more of this. I think it terrified Allegra from ever watching any other episode. It terrified me from statues for like months. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just see? Easy, so I'm surrounded by statues. Okay. <laughs> For, okay, for, yeah. If I know somebody who hasn't seen Doctor Who, I show them Blink. And it, well, for me, it's either Blink or The Girl in the Fireplace. Though I'll say uh, now, because yeah, of Matt Smith, one. that first Matt Smith episode, um, a lot of people that or the Van Gogh episode, Van Gogh oh, episode. Oh, you haven't got to all of us. Stop Sorry. taking your answers. Gosh, Sorry. You said you had to just it ask questions. Yes. yes. Yeah. Matt Smith's first first season was brilliant. I absolutely loved it because it was one episode after another of just absolutely awesome. It's like, oh, that was my favorite, and then the next one no, comes along. It's like, oh man, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and it's like you know, you go to uh, um um. Vincent the Doctor, yeah. and that was my favorite. And, and but I'm not too proud. I'm not. I'm not too proud to say that um, that um, my favorite was A Christmas Carol because it made me cry yeah. like a baby. I mean, I was bawling. I was laughing. I was. 
if there was any episode that just just ripped at my my emotions and my heartstrings, it was that one. I mean, it was absolute brilliance, and it was like nothing had moved me that much before in my life to the point after I saw it, I recorded a song completely just just based on that episode. It was like that's it. I got to put this down now because. It's a it, rare opportunity to have that kind of emotional yeah. power flowing through your veins. I just had to get it out. And so that, that was, that's why. The I obvious really. answer is every Stephen Muffet episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Blake, of course, is one person you think of. Yeah. Think of the girl in the fireplace because, yes, Vincent and the doctor, I was weeping openly. Oh. But to throw something else out there, I'm going to nominate The Beast Below, and here's why. Um, because that is a fantastic episode, a, 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 fast, a, a look at him being a complete child and mean and la la la, as well as trying to be this understanding, oh, this is also fun, look at this, and solving things, look, it's not, the engines aren't moving, there's no engines because the water's not going. And it's also what I love so much about the new Who is it throws back, without being obvious sometimes, tie-ins to old episodes because that ties into Tom Baker and the Ark in space because he was in that same fleet on a different ship about 60 years earlier oh. and that's just effing brilliant and I was just giddy and going I don't know that so and, and also if you look at a lot of the graffiti it foreshadows what's going to happen exactly and there at the end where he's ready to do the horrible thing it shows you the need for the companion it's mm -hmm. as much as we hate it sometimes Batman needs a Robin the doctor needs a companion. I love you, Eccleston, but you needed Rose, even if she became an annoying... Uh, Hi. Hi, how are you doing? He's mentioned that before, is that he needs a conscience. That's basically what he needs his companion for, because he knows he's capable <coughs> of doing some stupid and, and immensely... Like know, wearing all black leather. Well, that too, you know, <laughs> like that. And, and he's capable of making huge mistakes. Mm, he needs that well, conscience to tell him, you sure you want to be here? Yeah. I'll, I'll at least give my favorite episode. Um, hands down for me was Time Crash. Because it brought Peter Davison back. And you want to talk about seeing me cry like a little girl? Oh, no. oh yeah. The waterworks when he started that final speech, I was I was bawling. I, I kind of liked it too, but I thought that, um, that you know, the tenant just was like, you know, big ego. And he was like, oh, you know, he's yeah. doing everything wrong. And it was like, that, that's I thought he was better at that overall respect. in the next Doctor, where you got that, oh, he, you know, Tenet might be the, yeah. you know, ooh, and then you got that love that was really one of the first ones we got together, doctors and stuff. That was yeah, but, was but the reason why, why it was my very Peter Davison was my doctor. I mean, that, that but hands down is my favorite doctor. So it, it was a double, double whammy for me because of stupid Moffat. I was waiting for the tie into, you know, that was yeah. the first yeah. real lock in tie into old Who. So, so yeah, um, good stuff. Yeah, let's talk about some of the writers on Who. Um, yeah. We're going we're gonna to start with classic Who. Uh, um, who are some of your favorite writers and why of Classic Who? Because we've had some phenomenal writers come out of Classic Who. Uh, now I remember people's names. <laughs> well, we had like uh, Terry Nation, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. We had um, Douglas Adams. Douglas Adams, of course. Um, we had, um, I would almost say John Nathan Turner. Even though he produced, I mean, he did do a lot to reshape mm -hmm. Who. Um, who did this? Uh, do you know who did the second half? A uh, good chunk of the second half of Pertwee, because I thought some of his mad scientist stuff was really fun. Was that pre? Was that pre anniversary or <coughs> post anniversary? Uh, right after he got stopped being trapped in modern day London. <laughs> so when he got the, when he got the the machine back. Yes. So that would be after after the anniversary. It, uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because that's when he finally got the time circuit back and the knowledge to actually use it. So. With me, I, yeah. I think that it's uh, Rod Moore and Phil Hem Hinchcliffe. I mean, yeah. the that's entire yeah. that's a good call. like 14 season. Um, it's, it's anywhere from uh, halfway through the 13th through the 14th through the first half of the 15th yeah. season. They had their hands all over that. And you had such great writing in there. And it's like that whole, you know, hammer horror, the whole goth feel to it. Yeah. It was, it, you, you just, the only place that you, that uh, captures that spirit now I think is in what we're getting now with uh, Matt Smith's um, incarnation. But yeah, I think that that combination there was uh, up until recently yeah. the most powerful and most successful. Well, I, I can't say Stephen Moffat. You can't. <laughs> no. Um, well, when he wrote Curse of the Fatal Death, it doesn't count for classic. <laughs> no, I, I don't count that as classic. Okay. 
Um, I think it's Chucky Day. Do you cosplay like Douglas Adams and I guess Terrence Dick? Mm. Um, I think that's what I mean. Just I've got I mean just a, a gigantic colossal literary love for Douglas Adams anyway. Um, but I mean he did. I think those two writers had a lot of very cre- creative stories. I don't really know if I have any least favorite episodes. I think by uh, any of those two. So that would be my answer. That is forty two. What they did was always interesting, even if it didn't always. Work. It didn't always work. <laughs> yeah, but they, but they it was pulled it off well. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, Whoever it was who wrote uh, the two doctors. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is that the five doctors? No, no. Five. How is that even Every oh, classic no, 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 answer has been the five <laughs> doctors. <laughs> you said you hated the two doctors. It was not until I saw the two doctors that you hated it. That I knew what hate was. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was that writer? I mean, oh, don't you have him right there? I'm kind of curious now who wrote that. What year was that? You're moderating. How did you not have all this ready, sir? I wasn't expecting Why did you write an app so you can add that to your hyphenated list of things? Uh, Robert Holmes. Robert. Hey, that's no. Come on. Directed by Paul Holmes. If I had to really pick a standalone one, Robert Holmes wrote some really great stories. So I give him slack for for doing the two doctors. I mean, he's the guy that gave us cages and draws and he a lot of cool And that's stories. actually considered, if, if you look at a lot of when fans vote about what is the number one best episode of Classic Who, the caves is up there pretty much every single time. And I think I think that you that any great writer anywhere is deserving of at least one clunker. And at least he gave us uh, he gave us the story in which Patrick Trout can come back. It may have been total crap, except for those first five minutes. Yeah. But at least he brought him back. So actually this this brings an interesting question up with the with the whole uh, second doctor um, and Paul Cor- Cornell's theory about why the doctor was so old in that why Jamie was so old old in that do you do you buy his theory that before he regenerated the time Lords sent him out to do like black ops missions <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised I, I would not because it just seems like his kind of uh, character would do that in on his own terms mm-hmm. and it wouldn't surprise me at all that the uh the time lords would force him to do that because i mean that also explains why the um the second doctor in the three doctor says why don't you use your little shield mm-hmm. that that kurt we didn't know about it's little things like that i mean cornell actually went back and figured all this out and one of his one of his books talks mm-hmm. about um all that and the secret history of the second doctor and would also explain, I think, the thing that we're also seeing is that um, the second Doctor kept popping up. I mean, we had him showing up in the three Doctors, and then he shows up again in the five, yeah. and then he shows up in the two Doctors. So he's always popping into the other Doctors' time streams. So, yeah, maybe he's doing some mop-up work. Maybe he's doing, you know, some freelancing on the side that the Time Lords are forcing him to do. So maybe the Time Lords have something over his particular incarnation. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that there is um, validity to that. And Moffat, you know, again, I don't know if he's doing it, but I, as being an old-time fan, I see him tying it into the fact that Matt Smith's Doctor at the beginning of the season was this hundreds of years old Doctor completely backs up that. Whether or not he's ever going to tie it into that, I know other fans must have thought of that and been like, see, the second Doctor did go do other things that we never saw. Well, this is Moffat. Who knows what we're going to find? Exactly. Okay. Um, there is one thing that contradicts that, and it's that even as late as the two doctors, you have Jamie, well into his 40s, well, still being written as if he's a teenager. Touche. I'm immature. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, look I at think, Billy down I, there. I mean, come on. I think the only reason why is because they couldn't make a, a CGI Jamie, okay? I well, mean, you just go with the actor that you have. Yeah, but, but I mean, they could have gotten away with just going with a couple of throwaway lines of dialogue to explain their reunion off-camera or something years later. Well, see, then that would p- completely invalidate the end of the um, uh, um, the War Games, where yeah. he's lost all memory of it entirely. Yeah, yeah Cornell basically true. says that he went back after the fact to Doctor and picked Jamie up a second time after that fact, and, you know, doesn't remember the original Avengers, but, except that first encounter, because that's the one thing they did get to remember, that, you know, the adventure started shortly thereafter he got sent back. Or so Cornell's, Cornell, Cornell's theory uh, is. I would ask you who your favorite writer of New Who is, but I think that's already been answered, yeah. hands down. Yeah, Unless somebody wants to uh, choose somebody besides uh, Cornell, Moffat. Well, how about giving a shout-out to, you know, a New Who episode done by a classic Who writer, Benson and the Doctor. 
Yeah. Like, you know, he's like, he took everything that worked in the old, everything that works about the new, and he meshed them together beautifully. It was this beautiful synergy of, of everything that is Doctor Who. Does he cry sometimes? I know, go yeah. right there at the yeah. end. Yeah. Like when, he, when he's at the museum at the end. I'm like, right. I can't and Amy can't and understand. Okay. And you're like, I know he's not going to. I know, but damn it, Amy, you have to. I'm an artist, so I know okay. what they're feeling. So we're, we're getting you know towards the end now, from what I'm being, t being told. Oh, sure. I'm going to ask the one question I said I was not going to ask, which I'm going to kick myself I'm for. I'm dancing for you. No. <laughs> Who doctor. is your favorite <laughs> companion out of New Who? <laughs> I know Who? Jason's answer. <laughs> My yes, Jason. Yes. How many Amy Pons? Two. All of them. <laughs> In bikinis washing the TARDIS. Yes. yes. Not the young one. <laughs> the old one washing the TARDIS. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm an open mind. Okay, Billy. Who's your favorite of the new companions? Honestly, okay, I, I do love me some Amy Pond, but if, I, if I'm completely honest with myself, Donna Noble did so much yes. for the show. Yes. She got rid of the whole I'm gushy over the doctor kind of thing that was yeah. really starting to drag the show down. And they had such a fantastic dynamic of being equals in a completely opposite way. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was just, a, just like, I wasn't a huge fan of her in the Christmas special, but yeah. Partners in Crime, oh my god. Right there at the oh. beginning where they're talking to each other yes. through the windows and then you look and the villains have just been watching them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> moonlighting for me. Yeah. It's moonlighting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so awesome. I, I, Season one, I'd have to say Rory because he's the every man, you know. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, you know, it's like, well, he's Amy's boyfriend, so what, you know? He's, he's like, he's like the guy that stumbles into the TARDIS but eventually becomes the hero. Yeah. Okay. I mean, look what he's done. How many times has he died? How many years did he wait for, uh, for yeah. Amy? Look at all that he's been through. He was plastic for God's yeah. sake. And he oh went God. up against the, the the reborn Cyberman, which was even even cooler. And. and he, like, the guy went through hell. Did yeah. he sign on for that? No. He, he did it because of Amy. Yeah. One of the things I love about Rory, too, is that he doesn't actually go on that much of a heroic journey compared to other companions. He has always been this good of a person. Yeah. It's, it's the Doctor Who thing. I'm sorry, it's the Captain America thing. It's the Captain America movie. He was a hero. He's just becoming a man. Yeah, it's just this is the only time he's ever really had a reason to demonstrate it. And... <laughs> I think that's really great. So many other people become better through the Doctor, and then he's <laughs> just maybe the best man the Doctor has ever met, mm -hmm. who keeps coming into moral conflict with him for exactly that reason. And who is your favorite companion out of New Who, Clayton? Uh, probably someone who the Doctor definitely made a worse person, <laughs> which is to say Richard Milhouse Nixon. <laughs> 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 and if you that that's pretty much it from what I mean told time wise. If you want to relive this panel, we're one um, minute early. Wow. Are we? Yeah. Oh, I was told we had so two minutes. So let's take four minutes extra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you want to relive any of this episode, um, you can catch us on GallifreyPirateRadio.com. Check us out on Facebook or YouTube. Never heard of them. Is it no. zooming in on me? Is it zooming? No, it's not going to zoom in on you. But um, I would like to thank our panelists. We'd um, like to thank you. you. Don't, don't thank me. Thank you, Mind Raper. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean Mind Raper. Yeah. yeah. Until she started falling for him, I really loved Martha Jones. No, yeah. I, yeah, I really. Uh, 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 well, someone had a mention. I can't on camera yeah. talk about Captain Jack. Uh, Captain Jack. Captain Jack Let's is talk great on Doctor <laughs> Who, but every time he goes over to Torchwood, he starts to suck. We do need that app for the. Yanko's dead. He's not sucking anything anymore. That made me cry too. That made me cry so What made you cry? Yanto dying. Oh yeah, that was. Dude, that was just. That, yeah. that episode is oh, really good. Oh, shit, spoilers for you. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Let's talk about that. I don't fucking care. Yeah, but Torchwood <laughs> <laughs> Earth was actually good. I know. Torchwood Earth was actually good, though. I'll, I'll, say, to show you. I'll, I'll say this about, about Torchwood is I hated the first season because I didn't think a single character was redeemable. Yeah. By the end of the second yeah. season, I was like, fuck, I actually care about these characters? Yeah. Um, and then the, the third season was just like, I can't wait to see what they do. And I think it was some of Davies' best writing ever. I mean, honestly. Um, and then it's a little wishy-washy with the, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think that yeah. I agree with you with Thank Children you. of Earth being Davy's best writing. Yeah. It yep. was so good. I never want to see that story again because <laughs> it was so real. It was yeah. so emotional. Oh, it was so powerful. Exactly. I cannot yeah. bring myself to see that series again. To yeah. quickly yeah. reference yeah. another con, yeah. in Dragon Con, right after Children of Mist, <laughs> uh, someone asked Gareth David Lloyd, excuse me, asked Gareth David Lloyd, like, do you think. Because it, it looked like at one point it was going to be his nephew, you know, whatever, that yeah. was going to have to be sacrificed. So do you think Yanto could have done that? And he's like, yeah, he could. But the difference between him and Jack is it would have destroyed Yanto. And I, we just were like, we were crushed all over again. Because we're like, damn, Yanto's gone and Torchwood's probably going to suck with Miracle Dad. Mikai <laughs> Piper? No, I gotta say, I did love John Delancey in that. Yeah, but totally. yeah, he, what can he Help say? Me. He's great in My Little Pony. He's yeah. great. Hey, what? My Little Pony. Is I love yeah. My Little Pony. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. I just, I just heard something interesting here. So you're, you're telling me My Little Pony will actually get good because John Delancey's in it? I'm telling there you, My Little Pony was already. I heard that doctor. too. My Little Pony was already good. It's yes. only made better by the inclusion. Wait, wait. Season doesn't Delancey. get good. One or two. I've only watched five one. episodes. One. Okay, here's the thing. Not only is John Delancey in it, not only is he in it, he is playing Q. He's playing Q within a chimera thing. They they gave the character a different name, but it is so obviously Q, it's hilarious. For science, I think you should try. Give it a go, girl. Give it a go. Fight. Wow, Jesus versus the Daleks. I think this panel could have been 20% cooler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we're actually sort of over, and we're still okay. in here. No one's yeah. chasing us out. I know, that's kind of yeah. awesome. Okay, can I, we give up? I, 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 I got a question. Yeah, I got a question. What was your least favorite? Favorite? What is it? Oh, well, yeah. Your least favorite, favorite story. Yes. Your least favorite story. Wait, isn't that... Um, Richard E. Grant. No, check the schedule. Honestly, um, new series. My, mm, new series or old series? New series. New, new series. series. Um, honestly, Best Below know. has been my least favorite. Okay. I, I, did, I, did, I didn't like it, but let me put it like this. Anything in Moffat's run is, you know, the worst is most people's best. Mm -hmm. It was just like, because I really would have loved to have seen Tenet do more Moffat stories, um, because I think... Tenet got the raw end of the stick, yeah. having to do nothing yeah, but Davy's stuff. I mean, really, true. under under yeah, his true. overall direction. Um, and you know, I, I know at one point they were they were talking about uh, Tenet said he would at least stay on one season with Moffat, but then he decided if he stayed, he was staying until he died. Yeah. <laughs> um, and honestly, Smith is absolutely incredible. Most doctors don't sell me on them being the doctor in that first episode. Oh, no, yeah, um, but Smith, um, mm -hmm. he sold me as the doctor, but what was the final in the coffin is that last speech with the atroxies, you know, where he's just going through all the different stuff, and then when they start flashing all the doctors, I start freaking out. And then he walks and through. And then he walks flash. through, and he says, I'm the doctor, now run. It was, he was the doctor from there yeah. on out. Mm -hmm. There was no questioning. Worst okay. episode new series for me is part one of David Tennant's finale because that was such a wasted, oh my God. Oh, wasted yeah. hour of television so to get to the second half. I was off. I had stayed right, up to see that episode. I and I was just up. like, <laughs> I stayed up for that shit. That was just filler. It was just I, filler. I, I agree. I, I actually went to London for the alien invasion and I was severely disappointed. I was I was literally pissed off and by it. me. I mean, I was just and like, wh why the hell do we have to turn the... The master into a fucking time or into a, a stupid um jet or uh, sick lord. What the, what is that bullshit with the lightning? That still really pisses think, me off to the day. I really think that um the the end of time was just just um Davy's given us the bird on the way off to yeah, Hollywood. Because I really do. You know, understand? Because <laughs> I mean, the water of like, Mars was brilliant. Yes. Even even the end. Is best thing he had done at that time. Yeah, exactly. Really. I was kind of like. Oh, I can't wait. If we just got Warriors of Mars out of Davies, I can't wait to see what gets us. He got plans for the finale. I, exactly. Right. Shit. And then he's got like, shit plans. And it's like you, it's shit. like you can almost see in the script that he's like writing it last minute because he stole the damn ending from Star Trek: Wrath of Khan. Yeah. <laughs> and, and from and Hell's good, Heart, I stab him. Yeah. And the only good part about that is like the last fifteen minutes where we we see we see the sacrifice he does for Will, and then he sees the companions. That that was. The only good thing out of the out of yeah. those two hours, I was, I was, I was the yeah, exact opposite. I was like going, "Please, dude, get over it. You've done this like nine yes. times before." Yeah, I mean, but, but what 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 that 
what that pro or that epilogue was, it's finally over. We're finally done with Still. Davies. Chris Bale's got 30 goddamn seconds. Yeah, and he's still got 30 goddamn, seconds. Got 30 goddamn <laughs> seconds. And he brought it all back. And they gave him seven fucking minutes. And you're telling me Captain Jack needed his help to pick up somebody? I don't think so. <laughs> I agree. I don't think so. <laughs> I agree. I'm sorry. I'm no, you can say what you want about RTD. But I have to say, nothing in New Who has affected me the way Are You My Mommy. Those four words. Yeah. 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 How that great never was it me. when it got referenced later? How great was that? Right? Yeah, that was all. but no, no. That I'm was sorry. old school creepy who that, all that over was again. My, that was Nothing in the new who has made me shake or make me hurt emotionally that, as much as that's that. That's still a creepy image when you think about it. That was my like, oh my god, I love this new series moment. Because up to that point, it was like, you know, this is pretty cool stuff. And then I saw... And, and, you know, the empty child comes along and it's like, my God, I this mean, is what's going to happen. It, 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 I mean, I liked it, but it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. I mean, I liked it. It was a good episode, but it, it just, it, it never affected me like most people I know. You have no soul. <laughs> there was just <laughs> awesome no lines in that one. It was. Awesome I don't know. I just, it just yeah. wasn't. Like, thinking about it now, I need a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> we need something sonic. I mean, I just went, please, frames on resonating. Concrete! How could you not love that line? And the no, I mean, James. it's a good episode, but I mean, it just, it, I just, I, I don't love it like most people do. Oh, uh, that, that was such a throwback to me, some of that class. No, I, I agree. The, the old stuff, there's some of the old stuff that's just so weird and out there. You know, the stuff they always talk about where the kids in the UK were hiding behind the couch. Yeah. And it's so disturbing to see that what's sometimes light and bubbly is this dark sort of creepy and that is dark and creepy. Are you my mummy? It's just like, I don't know. God. It, 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 it didn't face me like that. So what is your... He's normally turned on by people in, yeah. in Gaston. What, what has been your, like, your overall, I mean, both classic and new, um, monster-wise? I mean, or is there a monster you'd like to see return that they haven't touched on yet in Zanu Who? Because, I mean, I would love to see the Ice Warriors. I think you'd say Eric Roberts is a master. No? Yeah. No? Okay. I mean, I would I really think like he'd be a better master than... Clearly, the candy man. <laughs> Interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing the Ripley's again. Yeah. I mean, we've heard about, we've heard from them. Yeah. We had a reference to them, but I'd actually see, like to see the Ripley's brought back into another story. You know, because if you bring back all the, you know, all of the Egyptian gods, we might get a Stargate crossover. <laughs> oh wait! Oh, we're getting the Star Trek crossover in comics. Yes, we are officially in comics a Star Trek Doctor Who crossover. Really? That, IW yeah. is publishing. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. And it's licensed too. It, it's all licensed. They but go from meeting the Legion of Superheroes to meeting Doctor Who. How many fanzines? How many fan productions have done that? Like over the past thirty years. But it's official. Oh, it's official. Okay. That means they can reference it in an episode, and we could be like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh! I read that." Oh, do we want to see Gaming come back to do an episode for the fiftieth? Yes. Of course. Yeah, I want to see heartbeats. Neil Gaiman do everything. I want to see him. I, I would watch The Real Housewives of New Jersey if he scripted something for them to do. You don't think he spent his load on The Doctor's Wife? Because, I mean, he put so much what? He put so much in there. <laughs> Out of context. That's the worst statement <laughs> ever. He blew his load on The Doctor's Wife. <laughs> it's Neil. He could write a whole, he could write a whole series. I mean, really. He's got well, I mean, him. he did say that he would love to do that. Just I would love to see him bring him in. You know? Yeah. Um, and I, I think we'll get him for the 50th. I'm very sure to God we get him for the 50th. Woo! Welcome. I mean, are there any other, uh, any writers you like to see come, come back for the 50th to, to, to tell a story? I'd like to see more classic, who, you know, writers get to come back and do I, something. Dude, I don't think you're going to get that. Yeah. Who wrote the Peter Cushing movies? You always end with Peter Cushing. That's that standard in Doctor Who panels. All right.